friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new or if you're coming over from the playlist. I'm Holly and today I'm sharing with you a Christmas recipes collaboration. This is going to be fun because you're going to find lots of great ideas in this collaboration. I know that you will. You're going to find lots of variety of recipes. So please be sure to check my friends down below in the description box. There's a playlist. Please be sure to click that and go and check everyone's channels out and find out what they're making. I know that you won't be disappointed. And it is being hosted by two very sweet YouTube friends, Valerie at Valerie Hargett Cooks and Sammy at Managing the Maze. They both have great content on their channels, lots of food content. So if you're looking for new ideas of things that you can make for your family, please be sure to go and check both of their channels out. You will not be disappointed. They have a lot of recipes there that you can try and make for your family. Like I said, you will not be disappointed. So I'm gonna leave their links down below in the description box. So please be sure to go and check that out. And now I'm gonna show you what it is I made for this collaboration. I hope that you enjoy the video and I hope everyone has a blessed holiday season. This first recipe is a graham cracker toffee crunch recipe. <laughs> So a mouthful, but it's a delicious recipe. You'll need three fourths cup of light brown sugar, one cup of chopped pecans, two cups of chocolate chip morsels, 16 whole graham crackers, and one cup of but butter, which will be two sticks of butter. And that is it for this recipe. So really simple and easy to make, and I'm gonna show you how quickly you can do this. So the first thing you will wanna do is take a cookie sheet and put some parchment paper down or aluminum foil. Do not use wax paper. And just spray it a little bit. Then take each of those graham crackers and just break them into fours. And you will just line your cookie sheet until you have it completely filled with all 16 graham crackers. And just do your best to get them filled in. You'll see at the bottom you have to kind of just kind of put them in a little bit. And I did break one just so that way I could fit it in there. So that worked out fine. Then take the butter and put that in a small saucepan. You want to melt that until it's completely melted and then I add that brown sugar to it. I just find it melts a little bit better once the butter is completely melted. Then you will just whisk this until it turns into sort of a caramel consistency and that'll take about three minutes to do. And you'll just see it kind of where the butter kind of disappears and you start to see more of a caramel texture. Now you will pour it over the graham crackers and you want to just spread it out as evenly as you can and I just try to do that as quickly as I can before it starts to thicken up a little bit. Then I take a spoon and just smooth it over the top of those graham crackers and I try to get it in kind of where it's the cracks and everything too. Put it in the oven on 350 and bake it for 7 minutes until it starts to bubble up. And then when it comes out of the oven, then you take those chocolate chips because you want to work fast because you want the, this pan to still be hot. So once that starts to melt, then you just smooth it, and it only takes a few minutes, just smooth it over the top of that caramel. And just try not to, you know, get it on top of the chocolate. Uh, it should work pretty easily. As you can see, it spreads pretty smoothly. And before the chocolate starts to set up, sprinkle over the pecans, and then you can put this in the refrigerator for a few minutes to help it set up a little bit faster. And once I took it out of the refrigerator, I started to break it into pieces. And at first I thought, okay, it's gonna stay in where they're little squares, rectangles, but they kind of went rustic on me uh, so it didn't quite stay for the first few that I did did not stay um, like a graham cracker 
So it was in pieces, but that's all right because it tasted fine. It was really delicious. If you've ever had a Heath bar, or I grew up with eating uh, score bars, which is kind of the same thing, S-K-O-R. Um, it's similar to a Heath bar. They're a little bit thinner, I think, but really, really good. So it's that toffee flavor, and that's exactly what you get with this. And you just break it into little pieces or big pieces, however you want. And no matter how you break it, it's going to taste good. But I eventually turned it um, a different way. And when I started to break it from a different end, I was able to actually break it where you could have um, the, the little, you know, squares or the little uh, rectangles. And that worked out great. So you'll see here in a minute when I break it, you can see how it stayed just like that. So then they were easy to break like that. If I would have started off from the beginning doing it this way, they all would have looked like that. So just, you know, if you're making this, just beware that you may have to, you know, break it a certain way uh, to get it into the shape that it originally was as far as the little, you know, rectangles. Or you can leave it as a square, but either way, as I said, they tasted delicious. <laughs> and this recipe does make a lot, which is good because these are really delicious, as I said. And you can see that toffee, how that looks like the toffee and everything. So it does coat those graham crackers really well. It just is a nice little treat. But I also uh, forgot to mention that I pressed down the pecans into the chocolate when it was wet. So make sure uh, to do that so that, because some of them do fall off, but those didn't go to waste, believe me. But if you want to make sure that they stay on, just press them into the chocolate just a little bit and put those in the refrigerator just to set up. But definitely, a good recipe to make, great for Christmas time, and a nice little treat to have. For Christmas, a lot of times I make things that are homemade, things that take a little bit more time to make, but there are times during Christmas that I would really like to make something that's just simple and easy, something that's quick that you can give if you want to friends or just something you can have and put out you know when people come over but this is just very simple so just some candy melts and you need 12 ounces so I measured out from that large bag 12 ounces and just put them in a bowl a microwave safe bowl you will need a half a teaspoon of peppermint extract and for the person's recipe that they had they used a different type of cookie which was a chocolate wafer and I could not find what she was um, using so I'm just gonna go with the Oreo thins I think these will work great also some crushed candy canes and you can either use about seven or eight candy canes crushed or go the easy route like I did and get the already crushed candy canes uh, the Brock's brand and I'm gonna show you how quick and easy this is to put together the first thing you will do is melt those chocolate wafers. So once you do that, you will also add, which I did not show, add about one to two teaspoons of either vegetable oil or canola oil to smooth that um, chocolate out because it does get thick. Then add a half a teaspoon of the peppermint extract and just mix that really well. Even though this is no bake, use a cookie rack so that way that chocolate can drip down and put your crushed peppermint in a bowl so that way it's just easier to access instead of trying to get it out of the bag. But dip your Oreo into the chocolate and then just kind of shake it off a little bit. If you get any air bubbles on the top like that has, just dip it back in a little bit and then shake it off again. And then just put it on the cooling rack just so that way like I said that chocolate will drip down off of the cookie and you know it's not sitting in a puddle but just put your um, peppermint crushed peppermint on top before that starts to dry 
and you just continue to do that until you use up all of either the Oreos or the chocolate, whichever one comes first. But very simple, very easy, easy <laughs> cookie to make. And these were very good. They were not overpowering with the peppermint flavor, which was nice because I don't like anything that's too strong peppermint flavor, but it did have a subtle flavor of that peppermint, which was nice. So I really did enjoy that. And these will definitely be one I make again because like I said, so simple and easy to make. Um, I've done Oreo cookies before, you know, where you cover them and everything with the chocolate, but I've never added the peppermint extract to the chocolate before, and I think that's what makes the difference in these. So I really did enjoy them. So something simple you can make with your kids. And this last recipe is just a fun and simple appetizer. It could be something for if you're having a gathering or if you just want something fun for the kids to have. Uh, during the holiday season. This is one I think that they would enjoy and even helping with. So all you need is some mozzarella cheese. I'm using this Rayos uh, margarita pizza sauce. Really good. And these little mini pepperonis. So this works perfectly for these. Also, I just sliced up some um, bell pepper, green bell pepper, thinly sliced. You can use anything you want really on these but it doesn't hold a lot. So um, puff pastry, you'll also need that. And in her recipe, she used uh, a puff pastry that was refrigerated. I did not have one, so I got the frozen. And just a cookie cutter, and I'm using the tree for this, but you can really use anything that you want. And I'm gonna show you how simple this is to do and very quick and easy. So if you're using the frozen puff pastry, I put it on a cookie sheet and I did roll it out to thin it a little bit. That way it will cook better. So make sure if you're using the frozen to, you know, kind of roll it out some so that way it'll get a little bit of a thinner crust. Then I just put the cookie cutter and make sure you cut it out really well. Uh, so that way you don't really have to use a knife or anything to kind of cut it away, which I did have to do a little bit. But if you press down hard enough, it should cut them out um, pretty you know pretty good it just depends on how sharp your cookie cutter is so just press down and cut those shapes out and then I just pulled away the rest of the dough and what I did was ball that up and I did use a knife like I said you know to kind of cut away a little bit but just what the extra dough I used and just rolled it up and rolled it back out to make a few more so just continue to do that. And like I said, you know, you wanna make sure you cut it good the first time. <laughs> so I separate those out so that way they don't puff up too much, you know, next to each other, but I just kind of spaced them. Then I'm gonna take that uh, pizza sauce and put that on top. And you just want a little bit, you don't need a whole lot. And you just spread it out. So just as much as you can get on there that it won't be, you know, too, overflowing I guess you could say so once I get that done then I add the mozzarella cheese on top and just do your best to get it on there because um, these are small but it will work where you can you know spread it out a little bit then I add the sliced bell peppers and I did slice them sort of thin so that way they would cook you know while they're in the oven because if they're too thick these don't take very long so you don't want really unless you like crunchy you know veggies on your pizza that's fine but I did cut them a little thinner so they would cook a little bit more uh, evenly with everything else and then I take those little mini pepperonis and I put them on the top and just kind of you know put like two on each little thing you can add more or as little as you want, or you don't even have to add them if you don't. But it just adds a little something, I think, to the pizza. So once I have that done, I put this in the oven uh, on 350, and then I just cook it until they're done. You just have to keep an eye on it. Um, and once the bottoms 
are browned that's kind of how I tested it and the tops are cooked this is what they look like when they come right out of the oven I did trim off where like the cheese kind of came over on that and just browned a little bit so I did trim that off but you don't have to you can leave them just like that if you want but when you trim it off it just gives it a nice nicer presentation but I just wanted to show you this one was not you know rolled out as thin this was this one was actually from the other batch and it's a little bit thicker so they're not as cooked in the middle as they are when they're like this where they're thinner so if you can get it as thin as you can um, then I think they work better and it cooks evenly please don't forget to check the playlist down below in the description box along with Valerie and Sammy's channels as well please be sure to go and check everyone's channels out like subscribe if you like the content and I hope that you enjoy all the recipes that you will find for this holiday season and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more like it, please click that subscribe button and the notification bell. That will notify you when I post new videos. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I absolutely appreciate each and every single one of you. I hope everyone has a blessed day and a blessed holiday season. God bless y'all.